Hey, everybody, it's Krista here with Krista's Event Concept. I have my amazing, wonderful, and great mentor, Helena Paschal, on today. Uh, she is a mentor, a coach, a trainer, an uh, event trainer. She's trained over 10,000 event planners nationally and internationally. She is just you know, everything when it comes to events. I always say she is the Beyonce of the events industry and I mean it. Um, so I'm going to let Helena introduce herself to you. Helena, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for that warm introduction, Krista, to be the Beyonce. That's, that's a major compliment. I had never... <laughs> thought of that so thank you for that and just a little bit about myself I am from Centerville Illinois I am a small town country girl that had a big dream and so as soon as I graduated from college and earned a master's in organization development I moved to Atlanta I knew that I wanted to have a business with my degree, I wanted to use organization development and I was using it a lot in corporations and I was planning a lot of events. So I've planned events for major companies from Microsoft, Delta, even universities. I planned with Harvard and Penn State and I love it, but I didn't think of, um, I didn't know other people didn't know how to plan events. So I was able to translate my organization development into event planning and I realized it's the same thing organization development and project management and all these things are the same as event planning it's just that people at the time when I started teaching it which was over 15 years ago they hadn't really thought of it as a career path it was when David Tatera with My Fair Wedding and Super Sweet 16 had came out people wanted to start planning their own luxury and mind-blowing events and so I pretty much was right in that era, but I knew I wanted to have a user skills of organization development and uh, I wanted to start my own professional development company. And so event planning just fell right into that. And then people started saying, oh, I applied that strategy. I used that technique. And I was like, well, good. So now I can start, now I have the basis for starting this business. Um, but it, like I mentioned before, it's hard to have a four year professional development company when nobody's gone through four years with you. <laughs> so that was the big dreamer in me. It's like, no, I see it being more than just a class and a workshop. And when I was at my, in my mother's kitchen, I was thinking about the name for my business and we just put it together communication and relationships and came up with correlations and the core of any relationship is communication and I just started telling people I just say hey I'm teaching event planning if you want to learn about it come on down I was teaching at the cafe intermezzo in Atlanta I said just come on down and sometimes at the uh, W and at um it was all in the perimeter area but also mm -hmm. at the Pagano's over there I was mm -hmm. you know, doing lunch and learns there but I always just wanted to teach event event planning and I was teaching a lot of public speaking and so when it started taking off and people were saying oh I got a job I, I got promoted I got this I got this I'm like it's happening but I still didn't have the four years so now <laughs> we're at your 10 year celebration uh -huh. but even before that it was I had already had the five years before meeting you mm -hmm. so you were still in the beginning of part of my dream and to see you now it's a part of my dream realize this little country girl yeah, <laughs> um, Center of Illinois created a program that could actually propel people into a career that they didn't even know was a career, a career that they would love, uh, has its ups and downs, but uh, to know that you have support. Cause that's the one thing too. I did, like I said, I don't want to just have a workshop or uh, just a certificate. I wanted people to know that you can count on me. I'm going to constantly be learning, constantly be growing. And I will serve as your mentor because I really believe in servant leadership. So that's a little bit about me and about the company. And um, I'm so glad that you've been a part of this whole journey. Absolutely. And I love that. I never knew it was communication and relationships put together. Mm -hmm. And that's how you mm -hmm. came up with correlations. That's amazing. So yes. for our lunchtime lessons today, you guys, Helena is going to go over some corporate planning tips, just some things that you need to know that will help you if you're looking to go that avenue. I know for me, I'm doing both corporate and public events. So um, I know that she has some great lessons for us and is going to tell us some things that we may have not th thought about. So, Helena, I'm going to let you have the floor with that. If you don't have your pen and paper, make sure you have it. I have my clipboard, my pen and paper, and I'm ready to <laughs> yeah, take some notes. 
<laughs> That's how I start a lot of classes and training. I said, grab your notebooks. Uh-huh. Grab your notebooks, grab your pen, because I don't, because I get going, and people are like, hold on. So <laughs> grab your notebooks, grab your pen. Um, it started off in exe- as an executive assistant role, and uh, event planning evolved from executive assistants always being responsible and the go-to person in corporate to plan events. And that's how I started. I got my first job as an executive assistant and I was doing all their company events. And then I was a part of different associations. And I said, well, I can go in. I want I, will, I put, put together a list. Basically, I would love to work with Microsoft. I would love to work with Google. I would love to work with these companies. And I volunteered to work with these companies. Um, I didn't know because at the time, I didn't know that you could get paid as an event planner. It was just something that I enjoyed because my pay came from being an executive assistant, scheduling, budgeting, travel arrangements, but that's event planning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of times executive assistants will say, well, how do I get on a corporate? I say, you already are. You work Mm -hmm. for a corporation. All you need to do is put corporate planner on your title. They're like, I can't do that. I said, who are you waiting for to change your title? So you literally, as long as you know, it's a lot of protocols, a lot of approvals, you can jump right into corporate planning. So the first thing is, of course, to get a corporate contract and to understand corporate expectations. Corporate expectations are different from planning birthday parties and weddings, uh, which I consider social planners, is because corporate expects results. They expect um, data. They expect, uh, I'll mention, so just the top three things of the corporate expects they expect number one um the results as mentioned they want results and those results come from benchmarking so uh, pretty much just comparing previous events to the current event that just happened so what happened last time how do we stay within budget what was the attendance what came from it were any kind of uh, valid connections made they want to know should we even do this event again, right? So benchmarking is very important and you can do it even your social events. What worked, what didn't work. They love breakout sessions. If you ever go into a corporate event, and I now know a lot of nonprofits and uh, even small business owners have different events where they have a lot of breakout sessions at their conferences. Um, that is for benchmarking to see what topics were people interested in, what keynotes that they enjoy, what didn't they like. So benchmarking is very important. And then it's testing testing different styles and themes, what worked or what didn't. Uh, and, and themes don't have to be uh, this carnival or Mardi Gras. Themes are what are the trending topics right now. So right now for corporate is mental wellness. It's really popular, but it's very necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are burnt out. We're going through an inflation. And so we are, we aren't, we're going through inflation. Well, potato chips are like six dollars a bag. <laughs> like I'm right. going through inflation. It, it, the world is that I am. Um, but they they want to know what topics. So event when design and things for corporate is not just about the decorating. It's about the designing the uh, entire experience of as far as the leadership and the professional professional development. So testing different styles and different themes of what people like that's going on is relevant in the world right now. And then the final thing is data, comparing that data. Um, and you can do that just with surveys. Um, Survey Monkey still is very popular, but they want surveys. And I still am very old school with surveys. I literally would give a card, a printed card with two or three questions on there, you know, rate this experience, rate this event. What would you like to see different next time? I like to just give it to them in exchange for a bag of M&Ms or a favor because I hardly ever get the amount of responses from these electronic things. You give away an Apple computer and people still won't respond to surveys, but they want that data. It's so important. So corporate events are looking for results. And so if you're going into corporate and you're wanting to plan, you have to use their language and their language is results. Their language is data. How can you get data? Uh, But I mentioned in another uh, for the the whole sip and shop, the series mm-hmm. that you should definitely know the trends right now for corporate. And the two trends right now are return on emotion, which is the ROE, return on emotion, and a, a mini series that leads up to annual events. So I told Chris, I said, You are corporate girl. She's got a mini series. She's introduced vendors. She's gotten the momentum going for her upcoming event. That's corporate. So right now, uh, due to the pandemic from 2020, 
people started saying, hey, we don't want to just wait on one annual event. We want to know who we're working with. We want to meet other people in local, regional, and national people. We want to meet them. So even they're considering webinars to be events. And so they're doing many events, mostly qu quarterly events that lead up to the annual event to get people excited, to for they can feel like they've connected with people so they can look forward to coming to the event because it's not just enough to say, I want to go to an event because when people got have gotten used to virtual events, that's not enough, but I say, oh, Chris is going? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go. Oh, oh it, uh, we got to meet up in Chicago. She's in Atlanta. I'm in Houston. We got to meet in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going. So mm -hmm. they're doing that to build relationships, to get people to go because it's just not enough to listen to a speaker that you've never even met. Right. So uh, that's the whole point. So if people have been following your series and they know, oh my God, I want to meet, you know, people from the wine crowd. I want to meet that person. I identify with them. I want to learn about it. I've always wanted to start my own. So mm -hmm. it gets people excited. So you're already corporate girl, but you already so that, amazing. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then back to the first one, it was a return on emotion. Um, mm -hmm. Events have always been measured by return on investment. Like if we're going to spend this amount of money, then we should be making this amount of money back or we should at least be breaking even but right now is return on emotion like how did people feel when they attended that event did you inspire them did they feel more educated and really for anybody that's speaking and really trying to um, hire speakers you need to get speakers that are focused on transformation they're looking for transformational leaders so people don't just want to hear this bullet point are you right. going through a PowerPoint? They want to know, how can I apply these things right now to change my life? So it's about transformation. But they're uh, looking for how do you make people feel? How does your event make people feel? And you can ask them that uh, people at the end of the event, because once again, it's all about data. You can ask them at the end, um, based on your experience, please rate it on a scale from one to 10. How would you rate your experience on a scale from one to 10? And that is giving them the results that they need in order to say, okay, they, we didn't get the feeling that they expected, you know, and so mm -hmm. the expectations are not just based on income anymore. It's based on emotions. It's based on feelings. So I'm really encouraging whether it's social or corporate planners that you get people excited about the event before the event and during the event. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I value excellent, but the number <laughs> one thing to me is over deliver. Yes. It does <laughs> not cost me anything maybe a, a night of no sleep, maybe six months of uh, agony. <laughs> the day of right. the event, you do better over deliver because okay. that over delivery, especially in corporate, is another referral, is another opportunity, is the annual events and, and getting locked in. So you want that, that process repeated, but you want to be the go-to person. And so over deliver and then follow up. Mm -hmm. Follow up is my big thing. I always say, oh my God, you did that big event. They could grab another planner now. So you right. need to follow up to make sure that you're rocking it for the next mm -hmm. year. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and then I did mention, I want to make sure I say that here that you, in order to get the contracts, um, they're not something just as magical unicorn out there. You can literally get an event contract if you're prepared. Um, I think a big problem is people just don't get, they're not focused. And you have to concentrate, like go on LinkedIn, take two hours, look at all the jobs that they have available. And you can literally put in the title event planner now before it was so hard to find a event planning job. You had to look under executive assistant. You had to look under marketing. You had to look under anything, but you cannot find an event planning job that was actually called event planner. Mm -hmm. Now they're hiring remote event planners and you're just really responsible for, you, you know, planning the event, the agendas and uh, making sure that people are the transportation set up, just the basic things. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're hiring for that, but you can go ahead and create an event proposal in Canva see what their needs are, put that in the proposal and send it over to them to whoever's hiring, whoever is the recruiter that posted that job, you can contact them and ask them, would they be interested in hiring a consultant? And if they say yes, don't send your package in one thing. It has to be a two-way conversation. Uh, ask them if they're interested in hiring a consultant while they're looking for a permanent placement. And if they say yes, say, I would like to send over my event proposal if that, if that would be okay. So it's going to be a few conversations going back and forth and sometimes they'll ask can I give you a call can I learn more about you or learn more and that's even better because then you can really tailor it to mm -hmm. their needs but um it there the opportunities are out there you just gotta snatch them got them I, I, mm -hmm. I love those those are just perfect and and one thing that I didn't realize 
that you mentioned was the mini series. Like I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I just was like, how can I get these people excited about this event? What can I do? Because like I told you in the past, it's been the ticket sales, wondering about yeah. how, who's buying what. But I noticed, like you said, if you get in front of people, um, our clients are last minute. They just are, all of them, right? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> all of them. So I was like, let me get in, like just stay in their face before they get sick of seeing me literally. Then those mini series, I didn't realize those were events because I had a timeline of flow and all, you know? And then now they just got a taste and now they're like, you know what? I do want to meet that person. I do want to yeah, meet that Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm glad you told me that because that's how, I think that's that will absolutely work to tailor that for corporate. I absolutely work because people get bored in corporate. They get bored. And I think, uh, like I said, I, I'm following the, the top corporate planners. I'm following the CMP professionals and all that. And they're doing it, but a lot of people aren't. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies are not doing these mini series. Uh, it literally became, started trending last year. So, uh, I mean, that will be a big thing. I put it, I'm glad you mentioned that. that will be a big thing to put in your proposal. That you Me thinking that I just was, I came up with it off the top of my head and it's actually a thing, <laughs> you know? It's a thing because your engagement. Nice. nice. It's, it's creating engagement and you don't get that. The engagement creates connection, Nice. you know? So mm -hmm. it's all it's engagement. They don't have that. People don't even know who they work with in their own cup, you know, cubicle next to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're creating that and that's what they need. They need that. And um, the attendance will just be so much better because people know somebody. Right. They know somebody before they get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that I'm I'm really excited about um about getting into more corporate because like you said I started out as a property administrator and then senior property administrator and was able to plan events for 38 buildings. You know what I mean at a time. I mean even if it was like I said my bullhorn, <laughs> my clipboard. <laughs> I had a food truck over here but literally being able to plan an event for a building of over 500 people that were working, you know, so just doing that and tailoring it um, for corporate um, moving forward for Chris's event concepts is, is going to be amazing. So I appreciate you again for coming in and helping us with these lunchtime lessons. Um, Helena, please tell everybody how they can reach you if they have any questions about anything or if they're, um, you know, interested in getting into event planning. Well, you can follow me Mostly everything is under Helena Paschal from LinkedIn is Helena Paschal. Uh, Instagram is Helena underscore Paschal. But my uh, Facebook is Correlations Professional Training and to sign up to get registered and uh, plan events and be mentored <laughs> for as long as you are. If you're in it, I'm in it. But it's correlationstraining.com. And I always tell people, I, say, I don't disappear. I'm here. I'm here mm -hmm. to make sure that you get to where you want to be mm -hmm. and then keep going. And some I'm people here. get there and then they, they stop. But no, no, keep going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to definitely attest to that open door policy. You know, everyone will tell you, oh, yeah, you can reach me. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Helena is that reachable person. Yes, she is busy. We all are busy. She is really busy. But she will make time for you if you need that you know, extra assistance, help, or so forth. So I'm here to definitely attest to that because even 10 years in, I still go to Helena for just about everything. I'll talk to other people and say, yeah, 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 that sounds good. Let me ask Helena. Let me check to be sure. So, um, but again, uh, Helena, you're amazing. I appreciate you for your involvement in my growth as I continue to grow. Thank you so much. And um, I guess that brings us to a close for this lunchtime lessons. Anything else you want to say before we close out? Well, I want to say congratulations on 10 years in the events industry. I know it's not been an easy task, but your commitment to, I mean, you have a strong work ethic. You have such a level of excellence, but so much passion and really just giving your all to people. I always feel like I don't care what you charge because I don't, say, I don't know why. I don't care what you charge. It to me will never be enough because they're getting so much of you for 
anything you plan. And so um, I've, I've been fortunate to have you uh, support some of my events. And um, I just think you are a phenomenal planner, but you're so much more than that. You are a phenomenal woman of excellence. And it's so hard to find women with your level of generosity and integrity. But I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much, Helena. All right, you guys, I'm going to close out. I hope you guys have an amazing day. This is the finale of the lunch lesson. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. All right, you guys take care. Thank you. Get out there and do some planning. Yeah. <laughs>